first of all, didn't discuss that much with Santos because I was about to go on a huge rant and I'd rather not. I know the 50 something yard shit he did, and then they sang Cody Parkey later. Oh my god. Off topic. Bengals, Cardinals. Bengals go off to continue the winless streak. They go, they trail off at all in five after a 26 23 game against the Arizona Cardinals, where the Cardinals. They are also in this, but they came off a draw and three losses. The stuff the Bengals losing to overtime against... No, no, they did not face the Steelers. No, I was talking about the Steelers and Ravens game. Oh, my God. This is coming off another loss. They had, man. And watching this game, just had so many problems that their team could not do anything wrong. Because they have no A.J. Green. No, sir! These were the teams you lost to. You lost. Basically, everybody knew, but you kept it competitive. You could have beat. You could have beaten Seattle. You could not beat the 49ers. You could have beaten Buffalo. You could have beaten an injury-riddled Pittsburgh Steelers team without their quarterback, an unresponsive off offense, but still a decent defense. You could have at least beaten one of these teams here. But you still come out trailing 24 points against the Steelers, and now you come off losing by a field goal against an Arizona Cardinals team that worked better pressuring Andy Dalton, and they didn't come back until a couple deep route passes. That was well done. Tyler Boyd played his part, and I think the receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals out of Alden Tate played well, and he only had one dropped pass, and that was a red zone grab. Uh, their first drive into the red zone. That they missed and they only hit up three field goals over the most of that game until a big uh, pass play over uh, two touchdown passes over to Tyler Boyd, I think. Kyler Murray played well 20 for 32, goes, thir goes 253, and that's Kyler Murray. Andy Dolan went 270, uh, 262 with two touchdown passes over one to Tyler Boyd that had an amazing 10 receptions. And another one over to Auden Tate that kept his ass together after a rough first half. And he only had three receptions. So, either than that, the Bengals are hit or miss. And obviously, Joe Mixon running up the gut because they were doing well off their rushing. And they weren't making much of their drives in the touchdowns. And the lack of anything, even their kickers were, were at least more consistent than Andy Dalton. Let's just chuck it up to Tate or at least give some short route passes over to my mediocre receivers. Or not even give it to fucking Ben fucking Bernard or fucking somehow Tyler Eifert that only had only two catches over the most of the game and drop and got messed up on a red zone play. Come on, Bengals. Come on. Andy Dalton is just pedestrian right now because the only thing we get is that he's a sort of pro bowling quarterback. And that kind of sucks to say right now. But I don't know what to describe Andy Dalton. Just want to look up his stats right now. Just noticing that no one cares about Andy Dalton. He's still the best quarterback the Bengals had in a few years, in a couple, in like nearly a decade. It's about to be his 10th year soon. 31 years old, and he's throwing picks off the wazoo, but he's still 7 for 4 and with one, over 1,412 yards. That dude is still decently average completion wise at times. Because we see him going like a pretty good 20. Uh, 20, 21 of 37. 27 of 38. A 20 of 36. A 26 of 42. And a 36 of 51. And this is against teams that are used to ball hawking. Like the Steelers. Like the Niners. The Seattle Seahawks. That have gotten way better off their secondary. And the Cardinals that came out to play. Drake Hill, uh, the secondary for the Bengals, did do their part. 
They did slow down a bit of the passing contention coming from uh, Kyler Murray that was rushing down up the field. Uh, I thought it was pretty good uh, handoffs that the Bengals were doing, illustrating a bit of uh, Joe Mixon and fake read options. I liked uh, Drake Kilpatrick that had a good game. Three tackles. No, six, six of two. And six, most of them being solo tackles. Nick Vigil, that had, I think, I don't think he had a sack. But he got some good tackles and stopped up the guy for you know, the, the halfbacks on the field. They did sack on, uh, I think, uh, it was Sam Huber that was, like, the sophomore linebacker that got a huge, that got one big sack on uh, Kyler Murray. And then everybody else just forgot that De David Johnson, they couldn't shut down, uh, they still couldn't shut down Larry Fitzgerald except a couple good uh, swatting plays coming from the secondary whenever it comes to, oh my god, they stopped the in routes. They're the best defense in the league. Kyler Murray had a carrying touchdown from the first from the first cut uh first quarter. And here's the leading rusher, David. What the fuck? 91 yards of 17 carries. And he already beat you off under under 10 carries already off 93 yards. Cause he's rushing down the gut and he's having a, a bit more spacing room than you. And Chase Edmonds said had a carrying touchdown in this fourth quarter. David Johnson did lead in receiving. Larry Fitzgerald did help in third down conversions and helped out through the team. Even though he's still putting up tremendous numbers, even though he should be fucking retiring at his age right now. It's scary how threatening Larry Fitzgerald still is. It is really scary. So good enough that Larry Fitzgerald can still remain consistent in an offensive threat for such a terrible Arizona Cardinal team. And for such a tanking franchise. The winner technically is the Bengals because they're willing to tank for anybody they can pick up in college like Josh Herbert or an actual good young receiver because we're wasting A.J. Green's prime or hell, a better linebacking core or hell, somebody because this team is terrible and we know that already. Well, the Cardinals, congrats on getting your first win. You, they've been the most competitive Young core in the league so far. Kyler Murray is putting up impressive stats. Especially for his rookie year. So he is a short, contending, uh, dual-threat quarterback with a crazy arm. And that's a scary thought. While Larry Fitzgerald... I don't know if he might be making a Pro Bowl this year. But if he does, that would be amazing if he gets sent off, off another Pro Bowl. Because he's putting up two touchdowns, 358 yards of 29 receptions. And he's been the most consistent receiver, getting five to six catches each game. And his best performance was against the freaking Ravens. That's the leader in the AFC North. So that's pretty crazy how the Cardinals have been contending. I don't know how the hell the Bengals, I don't even know if they're even going to win a fucking game. And that's a scarier thought than whatever the hell your team is under that's under like top 25 at anything you're 16 points you're fucking 300 yards you allow uh, oh god you're passing person you're you're passing are just the best thing about you assholes that's all i could tell you about this game the cardinals we knew the cardinals were gonna win overall from how in the hell the freaking Pe uh, Bengals were going to be performing. That's literally chuck play action plays. Do mediocre runs up the gut. If that doesn't work for Mixon, we're just going to toss it up to Boy. Thinks AJ Green is gone. I can't do any other creative plays. Then if oh never mind, we'll do a flea flicker and then a few fucking uh, chucks, uh, 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 a couple chucks for the airs over to Effort because we think he's the new Zach Ertz or Travis Kelsey because he's a tall six foot five tight end. Oh, uh, shit.
Shit. Next week, they got the freaking Baltimore Ravens. That's scary. That's going to be another loss. It's not the first time the Ravens fall victim to a shitty team from their division because they lost to the Browns a week ago, a few weeks ago. And they came up to uh, uh, overtime against the Pittsburgh Steelers, even though they, they lost their starting quarterback and their second-string quarterback due to injury. So, anything can happen in the NFL, I always say. Because you somehow lose to the bank to the Cardinals, but if you guys somehow beat the Ravens, I'm going to throw an after party because you're still one of the most, one of the windless teams in the NFL next to the Cleveland Browns. Uh, no, not Cleveland Browns, New York Jets. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on the game. Hopefully you guys liked my little complaints I have for the Baltimore, uh, the fucking Cincinnati Bengals and how in the hell the Cardinals just outplayed them. Until the second half emerged and the Cardinals actually had to perform better with that deep bass play made by David Johnson over that big play that got the first down and good enough to hit that field goal to win the game. So that's my thoughts. That's the recap. If you guys missed it, please rewatch it because I think Tyler Boyd played tremendous uh, valiantly. Andy Dalton kept chucking up the ball, but he got some good short routes in there and he kept the t game alive in the second half. Kyler Murray was amazing. Larry Fitzgerald kept up the groove, and David Johnson was actually playing his part. And the Bengals' deep secondary was actually put, getting in some good stops in there, and the rest of the pass rush was doing their thing in, in some parts of the game. So, eh, not that much to complain about. Good game for both tanking teams. So, yeah. Subscribe, like, and comment if you want to see more of this mediocrity. So <laughs> that's it coming from me.